Welcome to the New Trust Economy, where your hosts, Blockchain 101 author and founder of Rise Housing, Monica Profit, and Inc. innovation columnist and brand casting strategist, Tracy Hazard, explore all things blockchain, ICO ventures, and cryptocurrency. Each week, they explore businesses, applications, and venture built on blockchain or cryptocurrency and address issues like women and diversity in tech, trust and distrust, and the economics of access and value. We would like to remind our listeners that investing in disruptive tech, ICOs, and cryptocurrency is speculative in nature and involves substantial risk of loss. We encourage you to invest carefully and do your due diligence first. Now, here are your hosts, Monica Profit and Tracy Hazard. Hi, and welcome to the New Trust Economy. I'm Monica Prophet. I'm here with Han Kao, the CEO and founder of Crypto Briefing and a couple of other new developments. So welcome, Han. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, for sure. Uh, how's it going, Monica? Uh, <laughs> big fan of your podcast and uh, yeah, happy to be here. Thank you so much. Yeah, I am so excited to learn more about Crypto Briefing and what you guys have been working on lately. You guys have been around for a little while. And uh, as a retail investor myself, I'm actually really excited to be a part of the announcing of this new, this new venture, this new arm of what you've been doing. So um, let's just jump right in. I mean, gosh, how did, you, how did you first decide that you wanted to get into crypto and media and do Crypto Briefing? Can you kind of tell me a little bit about what hooked you in that space? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's uh, it's 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 actually a pretty, uh, pretty, pretty interesting story. Um, you know, it's uh, it was very completely unexpected. You know, we were really just kind of scratching our inch, our own itch at the very beginning. Uh, my co-founder John Rice and myself, we we met in a Telegram group in 2017 when at the time we were both spending a lot of time doing research on crypto investments and uh, ICOs for ourselves. And, you know, we started chatting and we, we, you know, we saw what was happening in a space with all the fake news, paid posts, paper plays, um, and just also a general lack of legitimate sources of uh, reliable information that was publicly available for crypto investors. And, and we said, well, you know, it's, it's nice that we have the right information. Wouldn't it be nice if everyone else had it too? And so, you know, so we said, what can we do? Uh, and we realized there was two main areas that was perpetuating this problem of people investing in um, scams or bad projects. And on one hand, it was, you know, the media, fake news, paid advertisements, paper play stories, uh, disguised as real news sometimes. Uh, and on the other hand, it was just a lack of, uh, general lack of honest reviews, professional analysis, and, uh, and, all, and reporting uh, on, on different projects. And uh, so, so we figured, you know, we were doing all this research anyway, we might as well share with the public and help other people avoid making bad investments. And so it started with really wanting to scratch your own itch to know about these, these you know, projects and kind come to your own conclusions as an investor mostly was it just because you had your own investments you wanted to make sure you knew about yeah so we you know we started off just um you know we were investing ourselves we were just doing the research uh, for ourselves and then we realized that hey listen this is valuable information that we were spending a lot of time and resources to do we were spending hundreds of hours on each you know each project we were looking into and so we said you know what let's just share this with the public yeah yeah, that's amazing. So when you say we, it was you and John Rice, right? So it, was, it started off with me and John, and then we we brought on um, a, you know other senior analysts, um, and we brought on code reviewers, so blockchain technology code reviewers, where uh, during the 2017 ICO and, and 2018 ICO boom, there was a lot of ICOs making very, very um, bold and, and uh, ambitious claims. And a lot of them were simply didn't have or plan on doing what they were doing. So uh, we would do reviews on these projects, but at the same time, we would also send in our blockchain uh, you know, technologists and, and developers to go in there. And some of them, the good ones, would give us access to their private repo. Ah. And we would go to uh, the entire code base screen by screen, take screenshots and walk people through what the project had, what they're doing, are they building something new and exciting? Do they have the, you know, do they have the capabilities of building these things? Is it structured for scale? Um, is it just copied code? And we would, we would, we would share that with the public, and we posted all those code reviews online uh, on our site for free. Well, that's cool. So you guys had it for free, and it's and you've been really clear. You have no sponsorship, no ads, which means no pay to play. There's no ability for someone to be like, yeah, sure, I'll pay you five or ten or twenty thousand dollars, and you're gonna give me you know, you're going to give me some media attention or some review or something. So it looks that's like right. that's your big way of like 
of like fighting fake news. I mean, from a larger perspective, do you feel like that same approach? How would you see that? I mean, I can see how in the crypto space, it's so specific that that's a way to fight fake news and fake reviews. But do you see this as like having larger implications in society for like being able to fight fake news that we see in other in like political arenas or anything else? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, for us, we, we, we focused on crypto because it was what we knew and it was, it was something that we could tackle and it was reach, it was within reach. Um, but in general, I think, you know, the, one of the biggest challenges when it comes to media is the economic structure of, of media in general. Um, they're sometimes they, well, m many times their economic incentives are not directly aligned with that of their readers and their true customers are, are advertisers because that's the ones paying for their bills right. and the readers are ultimately their product. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a, the, the readers are the product because, and, and it's hard, it's extremely hard. We know that because we've been doing this for two years and uh, we've been trying to innovate on different ways to generate revenue outside of advertising and sponsorship because it's very, very hard to get people to pay for news and, and articles. And so it really takes a lot of work. And, and so that's kind of what our mission has been. So, uh, and, and in terms of that, in terms of getting, you know, rather than having a revenue stream that comes from the, um, the advertisers, of course, you just like cut that off completely, which is wonderful. It brings a lot of integrity to the space. But then how are you opening things up to be a part of, you know, get another revenue stream going? It sounds like you're at this content and research, but is that part of what you guys, what the new Symmetry um, offering yeah. is about? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so we're definitely very excited about the launch of Symmetry. We just launched last week. And the, you know, then that, that really addresses the second part, part of the problem that we really saw out there was that, you know, there are um, a lot of uh, big players moving into the space and um, a, a, a good portion of the coins that are being traded in, in the market today may disappear and they may approach zero or come close to zero. And, you know, and so the, the overall goal is that, you know, and, and, and on the same token, the, there's a lot there, you know, in traditional equities and, and other, uh, you know, asset, uh, asset classes, you've got third party, you know, reporting, you've got third party research. Um, and in crypto, there's a handful of institutional yeah. research and, but they're expensive. They're very expensive and, you know, it's, it's uh, very dense reports. And so we, we wanted to create a product that was uh, accessible and, um, and, and affordable for, uh, retail investors that would give them insight on an analysis, professional analysis on the the viability and the commercial applicability of these various projects, and and give yeah, them a so sense of what they what they last, what they yeah. what they stand a chance. It sounds like, I mean, you said, um, you know, this is an institutional kind of. This is the same as what an institution would often get. So it was like an institutional grade product for, you know, like just institutional grade analysis and, and understanding yeah. of things that usually is just for the, the top echelon, you know, people that can afford that kind of insight, right? So it's almost exactly. like you're hacking insider trading in a way, because if yeah. insider trading is all about knowing the, the current edge, then it looks like retail investors now can get the same access to that current edge in the crypto yeah. market. Yeah, exactly. And that's why we named it Symmetry. The idea is that there's so much information asymmetry in the market. The goal of Symmetry is to bring symmetry to that, to that market. Can you talk a little bit, like, how do you define asymmetry there? Like, what is that, like, talk a little bit about what that asymmetry looks like to an average person who doesn't have millions of dollars to invest but wants to get involved. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's part of the biggest uh, challenge in crypto right now is this level of transparency. So um, an example of information symmetry is, you know, when, uh, so the, the way you define information asymmetry is the idea that one party in a transaction has more or better information than the, the other party. And so if, you know, if a, you know, what, and we see this over and over again in the market, you know, ahead of the, a big announcement from a project, you'll see the price run up before the announcement. And so what does that mean? That means uh, the announcement hasn't come out publicly yet, but that means that there's people inside the project that are sharing their information with their friends and their family uh, and letting people know there's something coming up that's big that could potentially move a price. Um, and these guys are buying in, driving the price up already. So by the time the news comes out, it's, you know, the, the, the margin's really thin already or it's right. even gone. Right. And so that's one example. And, and we see this over and over again. And the goal is for us to be able to tackle these, uh, these, these issues and be able to bring uh, insight and, and, and information to uh, our subscribers.
So when you when you say that you've seen it over and over again, are you saying you've seen it mostly in the crypto markets or are you saying that with your background, you saw it in traditional markets as well and you're just seeing the same thing replicated that you're trying to interrupt? Yeah, I think I think we're, you know, there's in, in traditional markets, there's a lot, a lot of rules and regulations. And there's also a lot of accountability uh, and recourse with these uh, publicly traded pro um, companies. Um, many of these crypto companies are, are domiciled in, you know, really you know, off where? <laughs> sketchy <laughs> offshore jurisdictions. And so we see True. it a lot to a different level in crypto. And so we think yeah. it's a big, big problem. Yeah. Yeah. It's a huge problem that you guys are solving for sure. Well, and you were saying with your background, it's, I think you mentioned that your background's in economics. Is that right? Is that what you went to school for? Yes. Yes. Uh, so I have a background in economics. I was a, a, a graduate econ um, from Columbia University. And um, I've since also been an entrepreneur for the past 15 years in various tech and media companies. And so, um, you know, between, you know, I, 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 I don't know if I've actually been able to fully apply my uh, ec economics background and acumen until I really got into crypto. And that's yeah. really where that muscle comes in handy. Um, but I've been mostly in product roles, uh, entrepreneurial roles and, and building teams and products. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. And so how many companies have you founded or been a, been a part as a startup you know, member early on? How many have you been a part of now? Yeah, so I've been part of uh, probably about five major um, startups um, that, that, you know, I mean, you know, there's been a lot of false starts where we ideate and it just doesn't work out, of course, and, and it's better to fail early. Um, yeah. But I've probably seen through about four to five at this point. Wow. And you're talking four to five that have gone to success or four to five, including the kind of, you know, crash and burn ones. Yeah. So I think four to five uh, in, you know, that we've actually seen through for at least um, over a one to two year period where we actually went and launched a product and said, this works, this doesn't. Um, and so, you know, there's, we, we, you know, we've, I've, I've had some, you know, crash and burns for sure. Learned some really valuable insights from that. Um, and uh, luckily I got some of those out of the way earlier on in my, my career. Right. Um, and you know definitely had some 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 nice base hits and and and, uh, and triples so uh, you know this right. this one to this this particular project crypto briefing and symmetry to me um, really 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 you know it really hits home because um, it's something that I'm deeply passionate about it's something that I was doing regardless of whether or not there was a business even in place we didn't start this to be a money-making machine. We didn't start right. this to be a business. It just so happened that we were filling a, a need. Yeah. Yeah. So you started out really just wanting to be able to produce and, and give back to the crypto community. And then That's it just turned into like, wait, there's a, there's a new, new stream here, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, the way we saw it was, you know, myself and John, we, we, we both were really strong blockchain enthusiasts and we're both very passionate about, you know, blockchain in general and its ability to, um, to, to change the world. And, you know, we said, well, if this continues on, blockchain will not stand a chance. <clears throat> people will, people will get burned and yeah, uh, right. yeah, it won't last. And so we said, well, if we do want to last, let's, let's see what we can do about, about it. That's great. That's great. And so you say you and John, so as co-founders, you know, I know you usually have to find somebody with really complimentary skills. What is his background? Yeah. So John uh, comes from a media background. And so he's, uh, his role is the, uh, the managing editor for Crypto Briefing. And so he's on the uh, editorial side and uh, cranking out news and um, opinion pieces and um, uh, also some analysis um, and uh, just, you know, general, um, you know, quick bites that, uh, of, of information that, you know, people, we believe that, you know, people should have. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so between what you guys have been able to put together with symmetry now, if I just as a retail investor wanting to learn more, if I go to symmetry, if I, if I go to, it's a symmetry, I, we have the link to it in the, in the show notes, but if I go there, what is, what am I going to expect? Like what, how is that going to engage me? And what, what am I going to see when I get there? Um, yeah, so you'll you'll see what symmetry is about and some of the different um, re report types that we offer. Um, and so, you know, we, we look at things, there's a few different ways to look at crypto right now. Um, and from from one perspective, it's long term. So anything from a year and above. And so we have a, a report type um, called our excuse me, our, our uh, in-depth digital, uh, full digital asset reports where they're, you know, 25 plus page uh, in-depth 
deep analysis going through on-chain and off-chain transactions um, and where we compare projects to not just crypto projects, but um, any kind of projects, traditional oh, projects. Yeah. Because at, at the end of the day, it's we're not living in just crypto. These are things that should have commercial viability outside of the crypto market. It's so um, funny. I've talked to yeah. so many people about this and, and finally it came out. Um, a friend of mine said this and I love stealing it. He's like, crypto, or he said, uh, blockchain is like truffle. You don't need a lot of it to flavor a dish. You just kind of sprinkle it and leave <laughs> yeah. it. Like don't, yep, if you start exactly. focusing on the truffle, it's just, it's overkill. You don't need to. And you're going to exactly. ruin the dish. So. Exactly. It shouldn't, be a truffle, it shouldn't be a truffle dish. It should be a dish that you can It has eat. a little truffle in it. It has a know? little truffle in it. happens to make it a little better. A little that's smell, a little, little taste, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, um, I know that you, you said you went to school in New York. You were, did you grow up in New York as well? I did. I did. I've been in New York since uh, I was two years old. I, I actually moved to Symmetry. Uh, not Symmetry. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, moved to, I moved to Singapore. Um, oh. Singapore about uh, three, three, three years ago. And I'm actually, I just recently moved back to uh, the States here, here in LA now. Oh, that's great. You know, I was going to say, if you're in Singapore, you are really chipper for this time of day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, wow, it's pretty late out there. In the middle of the night a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although I was, you know, uh, crypto people don't sleep. There was a, you know, point, night and day, night Ooh, and day. That is and, true. Yeah. We're, we're also a distributed team. So, uh, you know, we're fully uh, distributed. We, you know, my partner, John's out right outside of St. Louis, Missouri. Our biz dev team oh, okay. is in New York. We've our code reviewer, our chief code reviewers in Cape Town, South Africa. So, oh as, you know, we've got guys in Eastern Europe doing research, and and also Europe and uh, in Asia. So, um, yeah, there's something going on at all times of the day. So there's there's never a dull moment. If I want to wake up in the middle of the night and I can't sleep, I I, got, got I can to find to work. To. To, I got someone to talk to. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. This has been so much fun, and I just want to make sure, like, we hit on you know, what people can do, where they can go, what they're going to get. And I just want to, I want, I want to share all of this knowledge with as many retail investors that are interested, or even if they're just lurkers, you know, they're just wondering where are the, where are the good investments? Or if it's not necessarily good, where's at least the reputable projects to keep an eye on? So absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's just, that Definitely. seems to be the biggest thing that we really need in this space. And you guys are really filling it. Yeah. I, we're, we're very excited about it. And, you know, uh, go, going through reputable projects and also giving people ideas on, if people have a you know a, a stronger appetite for um, more riskier plays, but also have strong fundamentals, we also have different reports for more aggressive plays as well. So oh, we, that's we're able to we're able to touch upon a few different interests. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. I can see a future where Wealthfront starts finally inter integrating with like crypto and saying, you know, well, we're happy to, you know, help you watch, manage your portfolio and then using you guys as a wonderful news feed. You know, I just, I see so much traditional and non-traditional coming together over the next few years. And I think you guys are, you're ahead of the curve for sure. Thank you. Thank you. We, we, we're we excited to be partnering. We've got a lot of these partnerships in the pipeline. We, oh, I, I, uh, we also just partnered with uh, CoinMarketCap and CoinGecko. Uh, so they'll be listing a, they'll be showing a summary of our reports as long as our investment rating on all the, to all the token pages as well. So we're looking forward to more of these kind of partnerships and slowly integrating to the traditional world as well. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. And of course, as like more and more traditional, you know, the traditional world finally catches up, it'll be, it'll be, you guys are going to be right there on, on the top of that wave. It'll be great to see. So I wish you guys all the best. I'm so excited about Symmetry. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much for being on this. Thank you, Monica. Thank you for having me. It's, it's been really fun. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, this is uh, Monica Prophet and Han Kao. We're signing off on the new trust economy and we'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks, mm -hmm. guys. Cheers. You've been listening to the new trust economy. We'd love to hear your comments on today's show, as well as suggestions for future topics and guests. Visit us online at newtrusteconomy.com or on social at newtrusteconomy. Thanks for exploring the new trust economy with us.